So, um, I want to tell you a little bit about um, this font management system called Fontbase, which you can get from here. It's fontbae.se. You can get this for the Mac and for Windows. I'm using the Windows version. But if you have a Mac, you can download it for the Mac as well. So, I've already downloaded the installer. So, let's install this. And here it is. Now, I have actually previously installed this and played around with it a little bit. And realized that I had made some mistakes, actually, while I was doing that. Uh, so I'm going to show you the things that you need to be careful of, that you need to pay attention to when you are using this. Now, when you start this, you will see this here. It says Providers, and then here it says Google. And it is loading all the Google fonts into this thing by default, which is not something that you really want. Because when you look at it, it doesn't give you any classification. Everything is jumbled together. So it is a much, much better idea to actually use the Google Fonts website rather than this. So, And it's cluttering up this um, application with almost 4,000 fonts. So the first thing you want to do is you want to actually delete this. You want to get rid of it. Now, so this has reduced the number of fonts quite a bit. These are the ones that I had previously uploaded. but. What I realized when I was doing this is that I need to be far more organized. I need to upload them in a much more organized way. So I have a lot of junky folders here, which I'm going to get rid of. I'm going to get rid of all of them. Um, and then uh, add folders here in a much more clean and efficient way. So uh, what I will need to do is I just need to do this, but I'm not going to keep you waiting here while, while I do that, so let me stop the video now and then start again when I'm all, all cleaned up. So you may ask yourself, why do we need this? We already have all the fonts installed in the computer anyway, and why do we need something like this? Now the reason is that this doesn't install the fonts in your computer, it only activates them temporarily as long as you need them. And you don't really want to have a lot of fonts in your computer. First of all, because it'll slow it down. Even if it's a really powerful machine, like what I have here, it still won't like to have a lot of fonts installed. But then the other really important thing is that it becomes a real nightmare um, when you're actually inside the software and you have a lot of fonts and you don't really know what's what, right? That's the big problem. So before I get to back to font base, let me just quickly go to here. So if you go to settings and personalizations and fonts, you will see the fonts that are installed in your computer. Now I have very few here, and the ones that I have, unfortunately, I can't uninstall because they are system fonts. Uh, there's a couple of exceptions, obviously. I have, um, uh, let's see, I have uh, Barlow, which I use all the time, so I went ahead and installed that. I have Cormorant Garamond, li just like that. I have uh, Duro, like that. But other than that, I mostly don't have any um, installed fonts at all. I clean all of those up. So, and uh, the way that you would uninstall a font, um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to do it now, but there are two here. So if I say uninstall, it'll uninstall the first one, and then I have to do it again for the second one. But then some of them you can't uninstall. So for example, if it says uninstall here, don't believe it. Um, say yes, and it will say, sorry, no, we can't do that because that's a system font. So you will still have quite a few fonts listed inside your uh, software, unfortunately. But uh, with this thing, you, you will be able to sort of get around that confusion. So um, now, why do we have collections and why do we have folders, you may ask. Now, folders are the, all the fonts that you put in here. You select fonts and put them into the collections. So, for example, I have 45 monospace fonts here. 
but I only have 10 here, okay? Um, I have lots and lots and lots of um, adaptable sans serif fonts, loads of them, but I only have a certain selection of them here. However, what I can also do is I can make a collection specifically for a project. So, take it offended. hand. Remember, take it off hand, my cat? So, that's going to be a collection now. And what I can do is I can go to different places and let's see, for example, let's go to monospace, or rather, let's go to monospace here, because here I've already made the selection. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to add this font to Ticket Fand. And I would also like to, let's say, add this font to Ticket Fand. But then let's go to Sans Fancy, to another collection, or could, or could be another folder too. And I want to add Capsula. And I want to add, let's say, Daniela. So the Ticket FND collection has fonts that are from different folders. And that's the nice thing that you can have with that as well. Now I'm going to have another folder for this class, which is going to say Teaching. And into that I'm going to put the fonts that you people sent to me, so that I can activate them when I'm looking at your work specifically. Now, um, you need to be very careful when you are importing folders or fonts because the one drawback of this font base which is really a very very um, efficient little software is that it doesn't let you go back or it doesn't let you change the place of something you have to delete it and then when you delete it uh, it gets deleted from your hard drive and not just the application so you need to be really careful and the safest way to do it, I found, is to click on all when you are importing something. Up here, all. And then add your folder or your font or whatever it is while you're on all. Not any of these. Because you can very easily make mistakes. So, uh, like here, for example, I have Barlow here, which I imported accidentally while I was in this Corel font folder. So let me go back to all. And let's add another folder. So I have one here which is called freehand. So that's the one that's going to get added now. So it's right here. And I have already four collections that are for freehand. So these are going to be scripts and handwritings and things like that. So let me just go here. So um, I would also like to have a handwriting for Ticket of Ande. and also maybe this might be fun and um, let's see this black stuff might be fun uh, okay so I think you get the point now so let me go to Ticket of Ande. and I want to activate these fonts so I just click on them and make them green and now what will happen is that when I want to change this font here in Photoshop what I need to do is I need to remember the name obviously so this is called Antro Vectra apparently so I just write Antro and it says like that here we have Ticket of Hand in a nice elegant script. Now let's do it again. One of them was Capsula. So there we go. And then one of them, I think, was called um, Paradroid. Droid Mono Light. So this obviously is a really big font. So 
so I would need to make this a little bit smaller to fit on the canvas. But anyway, so these are active, and so I can see them in Photoshop. What happens if I deactivate this? So this was Paradroid Mono, and it will say, sorry, I don't have this anymore. Okay? And then what happens if I reactivate it? Sorry. It'll just do what it's supposed to do. So you activate and deactivate your fonts from here. You make collections that are appropriate to your projects or to, like in my case, for teaching, for example, but then also just groups of fonts that you group together according to um, their meaning. And that's basically how it goes. Now I have deactivated all of these. Uh, the thing is that Hang on, hang on, so let me just uh, do this again. This panel needs to be open all the time that you are using the fonts. So if I close this, which I will do now, even though these are still active, they're gone because I've closed the panel. But if I reactivate it, and oh, it'll say something like this, it wants money from me. So. Here we are, and now they're back. So you always need to have this open. Okay, I guess that's it for um, font base. Like I said, again, I'm going to repeat this. Be very careful when you're importing things, folders or fonts. It doesn't make a difference when you're adding things because you can very easily put something in a wrong place and then you won't be able to get rid of it unless you delete it so always click on all when you're importing something and if it's a folder it'll appear as a folder if it's a font it'll just go in into this list here so as long as you're very careful and as long as you realize that there's no undo with this thing that's that's the big drawback that's why it's freeware if it had an undo I guess they would charge you a lot of money for this because it is a very good software um, so as long as you remember that, that there's no undo, you will do really, really well with this and it will save you a lot of time looking for fonts, finding fonts, making combinations, things like that. So that's it. I'll see you later.